Now we're going to go through things with a little bit more detail, but we're still not going to get into the formulas uh, and the calculations of analysis of variance. And we're going to do a little bit of calculation of analysis of variance, not tons, just some for you know the, the tests and homework and stuff like that. But it's it's getting complicated enough that we don't want you to spend too much time doing this because there's a lot of ways to make little hand by hand math errors. But it's important to go through it, I think, to understand what's actually going on. We're not going to do that quite yet. This is still fairly conceptual, but a little more uh, pointed and, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, anyway, thingy. So let's talk about this within group versus between group variability. That's how all of analysis of variance works. We're comparing the average variability within our groups to the variability between the group means. And we refer to those as within groups and between groups variance or variability. Technically, it's variance. The variability could be IQR, it could be standard deviation, it could be range, it could be variance, but for the analysis of variance, it's variance, hence the name, analysis of variance. So let's look at this principle. A true effect, and an effect means, in this case, a difference between means. A true difference between means will be bigger than mere sampling variation. So think about that. We all, we've always got samples. We never have the whole population. And so we're almost always going to see some difference between the sample means. If we've got two groups for, a, say, a two-group t-test, independent samples t-test, we're comparing the means and we say, oh, the difference is, you know, 3%. Well, how big is that? You have to compare it to the amount of variability you would expect between the means if the null hypothesis were true, right? Just due to random sampling from that population. How much variability do you expect from, uh, from the population? Your difference better be bigger than the amount of variability that you would normally expect on average just from random sampling. Now that doesn't mean that the true effect will always be bigger than random sampling variation, but in order for us to conclude that it's a true effect, it needs to be bigger than mere sampling, sampling variation. That's how we know how big things are. That's how we know how to calculate p-values. We're taking the difference between our means, or the difference between our mean and some other value for a single sample mean, and we're comparing that to the difference that we expect to happen on average um, just from random sampling from the population. So we're differences in our sample compared to the expected differences in our sample due to random sampling variation. And our and if we want to conclude that there's a true effect, then we'd better be able to say that there is that the difference in our sample is bigger than mere sampling variation, because if the difference in between means in our sample is the same size as or even smaller than we would expect by random sampling variation, then we have no confidence that it wasn't just a fluke, that it wasn't just random sampling fluke. So we've got to start show that it's bigger than that. But we've been doing this the whole time. So with a one sample t, there's always an apparent effect. Apparent, I say that because we don't know if it's a real effect, because it's in, just in the sample, right? Our sample mean minus mu zero. So the difference between our sample mean and, mu and the null hypothesis implied mean, whatever that difference is, that's the apparent effect, that difference. The estimate of sampling variation is the standard error, the standard error of the mean, which is the standard deviation of the raw scores divided by the square root of n. So for a two sample t, I'm not going to put the whole formula in here, um, I don't think I have enough space on my slide, the apparent effect is either mean 1 minus mean 2, so the difference between sample means, or the difference in paired uh, sample differences, or sorry, the mean of paired samples differences, d bar. They're essentially the same. So anyway, the difference between sample means, that's the apparent effect. That's what it looks like the difference is in our sample. To conclude that that's a real effect, it better be bigger than our estimate of sampling variation. Now, our estimate of sampling variation among the means uh, and actually among the mean differences, is the standard error of the difference. So that's what tells us how big things should be. And in fact, we make sure it's a lot bigger, like it's 1.96 bigger, or 2.04 bigger, or something with our, with our t. That's what we're doing. We're saying it needs to be a certain amount bigger than just random sampling variation. So there's always a difference between means in your sample versus the expected difference that we would predict or estimate would happen just from random sampling variation. So this is how ANOVA thinks about in independent samples t-tests. This is actually much closer to the mechanism underlying the independent samples t-tests than the way I've been explaining it so far. Everything is differences between groups versus within groups. So let's say we've got some worms and we've got a group A of worms, and I made a little 
curves there, I probably should have made them histograms. So sample A for worms has a mean of 6 centimeters. Sample B for worms has a mean of 8.83 centimeters. So the average within groups variability, and I'll just put standard deviation up there. Uh, standard deviation is a good measure of variability, though we'll use variance eventually. So group A has a standard deviation of 2.37. Group B has a standard deviation a little smaller of 1.72. And so if we average those out, we get an average standard deviation of 2.04 centimeters. So that's our best estimate of sampling variation, which makes sense. The difference of every, any little thing, of the difference of any observation from any other observation when there's no reason to expect by our theory that they should be different. Obviously, we've got some theory about the difference between group A and group B, right? So forget about that. Just look within group A how different are things from each other. Those differences we cannot explain by our theory because the group differences don't help us at all. So that must, as far as we know, that must just be sampling variation. So then we do the same thing for group B. What are the differences within that group? That must just be sampling variation. It's random, it's unexplained. Sometimes we call it error variance or sometimes unexplained variance variability. <coughs> so we average those two things together because averaging a bunch of estimates together is always better than just one estimate and that's our best estimate of sampling variation. And then between groups variability as we talked about in the last lecture is we think of each group mean as if it was a single observation and then we look at the variability the variance or, or the standard deviation between the means. So the, the standard deviation is 2 and the, and the variance is 4.01 here between these two means. So we've just got these two means here, 6 and 8.8. .8. That's it. We've just got two numbers here. That's how we're going to find the between groups variability. So the standard deviation of just those two means is 2. The average standard deviation within each group <coughs> is 2.04. Those are extremely similar. We're probably not going to say we think there's actually a difference between these groups and the population. Now it's a little more complicated than that as I'll talk about later, but this is a good way to start thinking about it right now. What's the variability within the means, or sorry, between the means, and is that bigger than our estimate of just random sampling variability? So those are pretty close. So that's that's a sign that maybe you're not going to find a significant effect there, that you shouldn't think that there's something actually going on in the population. So we compare the variability between the group means to the average variability between regular observations. And if the variability of the means is about the same as the variability of the regular observations, then each group mean might as well just be another data point, and the variation between them is just the kind of variation we would expect all the time from any data point and so the difference between group means doesn't actually tell us anything about a systematic difference so our hypothesis is probably not correct we don't really know I mean that's kind of what the evidence seems to be telling us it seems consistent with the idea that our hypothesis is not correct so soil acidity doesn't matter as far as we know we're not sure but kind of what it looks like let's go through again but this time an extremely clear group difference so within groups variability group A is worms from high acidity soil there you go and group B low acidity soil a little bit bigger on average or so we hope so group A has a mean of three and a half standard deviation of 1.8 1.9 I mean group B has a mean of 9.7 or 9.17 9.2 it's a little higher a lot higher and the standard deviation is pretty similar 1.7 versus 1.9 not a big difference. By the way, differences in standard deviation and means have to be much bigger than differences, be or sorry, standard deviations and variances have to be much bigger than differences between means for, for it to matter. There's, there's reasons for that, but anyway. So the average standard deviation is, is about 1.8. The average of 1.7, 1.9, yeah, it works out to be 1.8 centimeters. So on average, that's how much worm lengths vary among themselves uh, due to factors that we can't explain, just due to random sampling from the population. So this is the situation we've got. Not much overlap in these samples. One mean is 3.5 centimeters, the other mean is 9.2 centimeters. And then the average of those two within group means, I didn't really line these up very well in my slides, the average is 1.8 centimeters. So that's our average uh, variability among observations due to things that we can't predict and can't explain. Therefore, as far as we know, just random flukes, random
flukes of sampling from the population, whatever population they came from, which we're not sure about yet. So if we think of each group as a mean, what's the variability between means? 3.5 and 9.2. The variance is 16, and the standard deviation is about 4. So we've got this business here still, and these things are still not lining up nicely. Oops. Anyway, we've got our average there. I just pretend about the misaligned business. Um, our average standard deviation within groups is 1.8. And the standard deviation among the means, well, there's only two of them, but still among the means, is 4. It's much bigger. So here we would probably conclude, yeah, we believe that those two means are actually different in the population. And that's what a t-test would find. This is what a t-test is doing. The t-test always takes into account the variability within the means. You know that standard error of the difference? It has s or s squared from both groups in it, always because it's taking that into account. So, how big is the variability between group means compared to the regular observations? In this case, the groups are a lot different from each other on average, and we can tell that because the variability among the means is much bigger than the variability uh, among regular observations. So regular variability of just sampling vari variation uh, can't really, well, technically it can, but it's having a hard time explaining how far apart the means are from each other. So in this case, it looks like soil acidity does matter. So the variability between the means is sort of how far spread out the groups are, and the variability within the groups is how tightly clustered or broadly spread out the groups are individually. So if you want to find a big difference between means, you want uh, groups that are tightly clustered within themselves, but separated from each other by a big distance on the number line. So remember, a true effect has to be bigger than mere sampling variation, or else we don't have any evidence to, to conclude that it's a true effect, that it's actually happening in the population. Whatever differences there are between the means need to be at least as big as the differences we would expect due to just nothing but sampling variation, just random, dumb chance of sampling. So. Here we've got some within group variance. And oh, this is going to be misaligned again. Oh, that's the problem. I changed my slide size. These things used to be right on top of each other. So we pool that variance, and that's how we do an independent samples t test. And then the between groups variance is just the difference between the means. So this is how you do a t test. So with this t test, can you guess where I'm going with this? Like, do you think you would be likely to find a significant difference? Your answer should be yes, because there's not very much variance within the groups. Although uh, I missed there anyway. But there's a huge amount of variance between the groups. So those two compared to each other, there would probably be a significant effect. We would say, we believe that these two uh, samples came from different populations, because look how different those means are compared to our estimate of within group sampling, our estimate of random sampling variation, just how different things should be in general from each other when they come from the population through sampling. But in this case, we're probably going to conclude the opposite. Each within group's estimate is pretty big, and so the average of those is pretty big. But the difference between the means is not very big. So the difference between the means is probably not bigger than we would expect it to be just due to random variation from sampling. And how do we know what, what we expect from random variation from sampling? We look at the, at the variation within each group, at the standard deviation of the variance within each group. So the true effect needs to be bigger than mere sampling variation. We know what the sampling variation is, or we estimate what the sampling variation is, by looking at variability within each group. And the, effect at the, the apparent effect is the difference between the sample means or the variability among the sample means. And that needs to be bigger than, sampling, than our estimate of sampling variation, or else we can't conclude that there's actually something happening in the population. We can't conclude that the means are different from each other in the population. And that's how the analysis of variance works. So if you add another group here, you've got group 1, group 2, and group 3. They've each got a mean and some variance a certain amount of spread within the groups. And we can average all those things together with badly aligned PowerPoint. And we get the pooled within group variance, like the average of the within group variance. 
and then we just take the means themselves, find the grand mean, some people say the total mean, some people tend to say the grand mean, some people say x with two bars over it, x bar bar, anyway there's lots of, yeah, it leads to bad Star Wars jokes. Anyway, there's lots of ways that people talk about it, but the point is it's the mean of the means. So the mean of the means is what you have to use to calculate the standard deviation or the variance of the means, because you need to look, because for standard deviation variance, you need to look at the deviation of each observation from the mean of all the observations, right? So we've got three observations, three group means here. We need to know what the mean of them is. So we look at the deviation between them and the average difference of each of these uh, group means from the grand mean, and that's the between groups variance. In this case, it looks like between groups variance is bigger than the pooled within groups variance. So, which do we think is probably going to be larger here? This is just kind of conceptual. There's no numbers attached to it, so who knows if this is right. But try and get the patterns that I'm trying to give you. Are we looking at between group variance being bigger or within group variance being bigger? Good question. So a true effect has to be bigger than mere sampling variation. How do we know what the sampling variation is? We look at the average within groups variability, so within groups variance. So what about this one? Is this more or less likely than the last slide to show us a significant effect? Meaning, are we going to conclude that in the population there are three separate groups, there are three separate populations that these samples came from, or are we more likely to conclude that they all came from the same population and their apparent grouping is just random sampling weirdness? I think we're probably going to conclude that there is an effect. We're probably going to reject the null hypothesis here because that within group variance is pretty small, the average within group variance, whereas if we take the grand total, the mean of the means, and then use that for calculating the standard deviation or variance of the three means themselves, just as a data set by themselves, we'll probably get a pretty big between groups variance and pr a pretty small within groups variance. And this is kind of the reverse situation. So here we go, you got your within groups variance, which is big. So our estimate of how much variability there is just from random sampling from the population there's a lot of that variability. There's a huge amount of random sampling variability from the population. We average that together so we have a better estimate of it. And then we compare that to the variance among the group means. And it doesn't look like the variance among the group means is, is bigger than we would expect it to be if, if there was nothing but random sampling variation going on. So we would conclude that the only thing happening here is random sampling variation between the means. We would say we don't have evidence to conclude that these samples actually come from different populations. We think that probably, as far as we know, this is consistent with the idea that they come from the same population. So, last slide here, how to do ANOVA without any actual details. This is conceptually, tell. this is like a blueprint for how to do it, but I'm not going to give you the rules, we'll do that later. First, you calculate the between groups variance. We call that sigma squared b. Sometimes people say s squared b. We, they get really sloppy here because sigma should just be for populations, but eh, we use it for samples here. Kind of sloppy. Anyway, we just use our sample. We just calculate the variance in our sample between the group means. We treat each group mean as one data point, and to calculate it, we just use a formula where we replace the regular mean with the, with the grand mean and regular observations with group means. That's all. So we have between groups variance. And then we calculate the variance within each individual group. Um, sorry, I should say W, not B. And the variance of regular observations in each group, we look at the deviations of each observations from their own group mean. So just a regular variance within each group, ignoring all the other groups. And then we just compare them. We compare them by division. So we say how much bigger is the between groups variability than the within groups variability. And you can do that by defi dividing between groups by within groups. And then we'll have a ratio. And now the next step uh, is a little more complicated, but you don't have to do it. You just look in a table. We just determine whether the ratio of between to within groups variability is big enough that it would be unexpected if the null hypothesis were true. So we say, if the null hypothesis were true, what would you expect this ratio to be, to be? And if our ratio is bigger, in other words, there's a lot of between compared to within, if our ratio is a lot bigger, 
then we reject the null hypothesis and say there is variability between the groups in the population as far as we can tell. All right, this is a lot to digest, so just keep coming back to this over and over again. Keep watching the videos, keep going through them, keep doing the examples, actually listen to what I'm saying and try and think about these population issues, these theory issues, these hypotheses. That's what's going to help you pass tests and be a super smart person who everybody looks up to for the rest of your life.